Folks, I tell you, you're, you've probably seen her, and uh, I want to really, really promote this show. I love it. Uh, the Wildlife Docs is an ABC uh, show, an animal series. For you animal lovers, you probably know her. Uh, she's also been on HGTV. For those of you that are like me and my wife that are addicted to HGTV, we've probably seen her on there as well. <laughs> Rachel Reinstra, how are you, ma'am? I'm fine. I'm fabulous. How are you? Oh, I'm so blessed. Thank you for fitting us into your schedule. And let's get right to the Wildlife Docs. It's got to be kind of a really cool thing for animal lovers to get to have your own TV show where you get to talk about animals. Absolutely. It, it, it started back in 2000. I you just hear my dog. My dog, Oprah, is in the background. Sorry. Um, it was about 2006, I got a show where I um, traveled the world and compared animal and human behavior on Animal Planet. So that was, that was a dream come true because normally I like to travel and videotape things and I love animals. So it just kind of brought that whole thing together. It's what I do anyway. So I got the opportunity to have my big break back in 2006 with that show. So I do not know how the universe has allowed me to combine my love of entertaining and animals together, but I'm so grateful. How did uh, how did ABC sort of approach you on all that? What was what sort of like their their basis of putting this together? Well, the FCC uh, is coming down on the networks, meaning there's um, there's a committee that basically says you need to have a certain amount of education and information and inspirational programming every weekend. Now, us growing up, remember Schoolhouse Rock and all those kinds of fun TV little cartoons that kind of were educating you at the same time. I, I love those, I man. Three is I was going to say, are you, oh, you oh, not remember are, school? Am I aging are myself? Are you kidding me? <laughs> let's, let's, we're, sorry, folks, we're going to detour from the interview for a moment so I can sing three is the magic number, conjunction, <laughs> junction, or lolly, lolly, where do you get your adverbs here? Don't, don't. There wait, you so, go. Conjunction, <laughs> junction. What's Watch your function? Punch. Hook it yeah. on the words and phrases. <laughs> and I know. I'm just I'm a sure I can do All right. So, so we have a requirement to have so much education, and hence the reason now we're going to have animal education. Well, yes. And the thing is, is um, the networks weren't fulfilling the hours of uh, education that they needed. So um, this was the perfect combination of – I'm, I'm one of four shows that are on – uh, Saturday mornings on ABC, and it's a four-hour slot where there's a couple other animal shows, and my particular show is about all the doctors, that's why it's called Wildlife Docs, the doctors of the wildlife um, at Bush Gardens. We film it in Tampa. Yeah, right around our, right around our neck of the woods. We're going to have to find a way to hook up with you and meet you face-to-face for a lunch sometime. That, that to your Absolutely. Right near, yeah, you're right on the street. So you get to work with um, a lot of the exotic vets in particular, which I think is probably one of the most fascinating aspects of the show. So it's not just, you know, we got, we got plenty of cat and dog vets. But, you know, when you've got sick, you know, reptiles and, and birds and whatever, but more than that, wild big game animals at Bush Gardens, right? Yes. Yes, there are so many different amazing creatures. It's not just, I mean, you'll, you know, you'll go and you'll see um, the giraffes and monkeys and all that kind of stuff, which is fun to see, but you'll see some really interesting, um, some really interesting animals, like lemurs, you know, to, to get a close-up look at a, at a ring-tailed lemur is just pretty amazing. And then <laughs> animals I didn't even know existed, an animal called an echidna which is a combination of, I would say, an, an anteater and um, a porcupine. So you put those two things together and you have an echidna. And again, proves that our guy has a sense of humor. Oh, well, the I mean, echidna has... Um, yeah, yeah. The, the echidna, echidna has four, 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 four penises. So God not only has a sense of humor... <laughs> he wants to make sure there's plenty of echidnas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the okapi exactly. is my favorite. You know which one? The okapi, where it looks like it's almost like it's got like stripe on, it's got zebra stripe on like half of its back end with like a giraffe head and a horse. And it's like the amount, it makes the platypus look normal. I mean, it's so incredible how. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, there, and, that's, and that's the cool thing about it is you get to learn. Every episode is 30 minutes. It's a pretty short show, but every every episode features at least one or two different animals and not only you learn about the animal, but you learn about, I mean, think about just, think about a, just your average vet and the animals they deal with, just like dogs and cats. And then think about, what if the lion gets something in its paw? Like, what do you do? <laughs> you don't, 
You know what I mean? Like it's it's a big feat to take to take care of these animals when a they're wild and b they're you know they're not your average dog or cat coming in for a checkup. Well, more than that, too, especially Bush Gardens. I mean, they're such an amazing facility because they have an incredible breeding program. So they're generating and repopulating many of these endangered species and that kind of thing. So I know, you know, we've gone through baby hippos and baby rhinos and all these things make the local press here in Tampa because they become like a like a celebrity because some of this stuff is extremely rare and exotic. So you have to have a great vet team to be able to get into it. Have you had a, get a chance to get close to some of these? Yeah, they have, well, I mean, they have, they're really smart about, you know, having rules to not, you know, not get too close, and, and some of them, really, they need a lot of training, and that's those are what we focus on the show, that dedicate their entire lives just to handle these animals and care for them, and, and the cool thing about Bush Gardens is, and the way they handle their animals is, these animals are treated, you know, with not only the utmost care and love, but they have positive reinforcement training, so it's always about if they're going to train an elephant to sit or whatever, just to even get an exam, everything's about positive enforcement, and they always keep them mentally stimulated as well, which is important because in the wild, of course, there's a lot more going on than, you know, at Bush Gardens, so they make sure that they keep them active in many different ways, and they have lots of room. It's, there's this thing called the Serengeti Plain, which is acres and acres of of just land to roam, like the giraffes, and yeah. and just to be able to be close, but they're not, you don't feel like you're watching animals behind the cage, you know? So there's always animal blooper shows. So are we going to see a Rachel, <laughs> a Rachel Reinstra clip now? Have you got a couple things that you'd share with us? It's like, oh, man, oh, that, that, man. that was so embarrassing. There is, yeah, there's some, it's funny. There, yeah, we we had some fun with that around Christmas, so the editors of the production company put together a really funny uh, blooper reel that we all got to watch, and oh, man, there's some certain things you're never going to see on the air, which are the animals doing, which is, you know, obviously what you do in nature, but you might not want to have on a syndicated national morning television show for kids. Owned by but, Disney. Uh, yeah. Hmm? Owned by Disney, by the way, for those of you at home. <laughs> yeah, two, yeah, right. Two, two, um, yeah, two hippos kissing and whatever else they do it can be pretty interesting. But there are some blue, blue moments where, like, there, there's an eagle, and then unfortunately, an eagle was uh, shot by one, probably not such an intelligent man. And so the cool thing about Bush Gardens is that they work with the local wildlife people that rescue animals as well. So, unfortunately, I mean, the doctors worked on this eagle, but it won't ever be able to fly again. So, it serves as an animal ambassador. So, they bring it to, you know, schools, and they have people get up and close with an eagle, you know. So, and it still lives a great life, but the doctor saved it, and now it serves as a, as a form of education. And so, it um, eagles have really strong wings, apparently, and uh, <laughs> if one hits you in the face, <laughs> let's just say, uh, it wakes you up. I see. Or we send you back um, to the makeup, the makeup trailer, yeah. one of the two, or both. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yes. I have several moments of that, which is wow. Like, or you know, an, an, an animal uh, defecates, or you know, they gotta go when they gotta go. Hey, kids, you you read the, the little book. Everybody poops. You, you've seen the yeah. little book. It's okay, <laughs> you know. So Bush Gardens has their, uh, you know, their own little piles they have to deal with. And you know, sadly, exactly. you might have to go to a different take when you're, uh, you know, you're doing a <laughs> doing an animal show. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few things. Kids and animals are, you know, known to be the hardest things to work with because they're unpredictable. But that's what makes them so wonderful to work with because it's. It's it, it's not a reality show. It's real. It's the real deal. You really they, you get to see them do what they normally do. So, and you're right about the saving. There's a the, the bloodline of the Malayan tiger is they're they're really close to becoming extinct. Extinct. So the thing that that Bush Gardens does is they, like you said, they work on breeding the animals that are endangered. Yeah. 
I want to get to, uh, and you mentioned unpredictable. I can't let you go without talking about HGTV a little bit because it's kind of like <laughs> a guilty pleasure in my house where it's kind of like the default <laughs> channel. I think when we're younger, you know, you kind of go through transitions. You know, your kids go through a Nickelodeon phase and they move into, you know, certain kind of things. And HGTV is sort of like, I, w- I wish my cable box would just come on that channel and just make my life a little bit easier. So <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you were able to be a part of Design to Sell. So give me a little bit of a behind the scenes of how an HGTV reality show like this sort of kind of operates. Oh, I, I have. That's, 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 that's kind of like you know, the veil, I, right? Everybody wants to see the, I, like the veil a little bit. Look. I posted a, a YouTube video. If you put, if you look up Rachel Reinstrup behind the scenes of Design to Sell, you will absolutely see what happened behind the scenes. <laughs> well, then we will have to uh, track that down and include that in our coverage so we can uh, give you yeah, Rachel yeah, Rachel's uh, behind the scenes look. Yep, there because there's a few, and uh, yeah, behind the scenes is is always so funny because you know you you get um, an inside look at. What things really did cost? I think if you, when you remember Design to Sell, it was, three, was it three rooms that they they redesigned three rooms in a house for under ten thousand dollars and put it back on the market. Right. So you'd also have houses that were kind of falling apart, but they had just three nice rooms, and the other rooms you never got to see on TV. So it's a little weird when you're buying a house and you're like well, these three rooms are great, but the rest. <laughs> Like, well, look, we got to pop in this DVD and show you how you got these three rooms. <laughs> <laughs> but you always wonder if there's going to be like a cult following of people that want to live in the houses that were featured on reality shows. Yeah, you know what? They may, yes, for well, first of all, they don't ever give the exact address, so no one's actually. Yeah, but eventually, because these these shows replay so many times, you'll eventually figure out that's my house. So it'll be like a little plaque on the wall, kind of like the you know Abraham Lincoln or JFK slept here. It's like <laughs> my house was featured with Rachel Renstra on this date. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> they. They. Yeah. They might, but you, you know, you also know with the very first house we did, um, it was in Dunwoody. In Georgia, and it was, um, you forget, you have to, at least in Georgia, you have to pay the taxes on the label. So it's not just that, I mean, the, the guy was amazing, John Getting, he's just so talented, and he really did design these rooms, but, you know, he was found a great to make the makeover even better. But you forget, you got to pay, <laughs> the owner still had to pay taxes on the labor, and the labor's not cheap. Yeah, yeah. So your your free makeover doesn't end up being that free at the end of the day. Yeah, you got it's going to be a price tag usually with something. So yeah, you got to yeah. make sure you got that figured out. So we'll, we'll link to that, folks. We'll give you a behind the scenes video that's already been put together that Rachel's got. So we'll pull that oh, out. For you. And the yeah, last and thing we'll I have ask to you. tell you, I I I'm horrible putting things together. And I thought when I got that job, I was just hosting a show. I didn't think I was actually spending an entire day painting and and putting tables together and. I would even say to them, and they would they would film me do it, and I just look at the cameraman and go, look, look how long do you have? Because I'm I'm the person that looks at those directions and and then calls and says I don't know what I'm, <laughs> you know they give you an IKEA, they give you a little picture. Of, if you don't understand, you call. See, that's why I couldn't be a host of a show because I couldn't be serious. I'd be painting like pictures on the wall, making designs and stuff. <laughs> they film me doing that because I'd be like, I don't want to do this part. I just want to talk to somebody about it. I don't want to do all this. Exactly, and and that was yeah. That's why I did it for just one year. <laughs> they realized that was, I would. They're like, Rachel, you're really funny. It's part of the reason that we hired you was your your personality. You're such a unique, funny per- comedy. But so if you could just bring that down. Uh, no, no, no. Be you, but but then take that away. Don't don't really. <laughs> and here, hold this paintbrush. Yeah, right. You know, right. So just don't, don't say anything. Just. Just ask them how they like their curtains. That's just, and then you're done. You're fine. So I, I always quote Jim Cummings. He's one of the famous uh, voice actors, uh, does all sorts of Disney work. And he says, especially with video games, when people are into something, they're really into something. And you happen to do the voice of a couple different characters, like Star Wars Battlefront and Splinter Cell. And you got people You got people who like come up to you and like, hey, wait a minute, are you that person? Because you get that? Because he does that. I was like... I don't think people... I, I mean... How do you ever get recognized for your voice? I, mean, uh, I, 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 I get it every now and again because of the radio thing. People are like, do okay, I know you okay. from something? Do I know right, you? Right. And I kind of look bland, so I'm kind of like, I can look like anyone's brother or cousin. <laughs> They're like, hey, do I know right. you? 
So right. for you, you're like the voice on a video game. You're going to run into these 13-year-old kids or Battlefront geeks going, hey, wait a minute, she's a Jedi. Oh, oh yeah, no, I have gotten, I have to tell you, like, I've, I've had three national television shows, and I've gotten more fan mail from the voices that I've done on these video games. <laughs> That's incredible. Than from anything else. And, no, people don't. But my voice is, there is a unique quality to my voice. So when people have, who haven't seen me in years will see me on TV, they'll go, is that right? And then they'll hear me go, ah, oh, that, that's her. That's her. They, they'll hear my voice and they'll recognize that first over what I might look like in that particular. Because I do lots of commercials and infomercials and all that kind of stuff, too. So, is yeah, it weird, the voice it, is what's recognized. Is it weird taking praise from a fan when you're the voice of an animated character versus, like, I don't know, hosting shows? That's got to be kind of awkward, isn't it? Kind of like, <laughs> no, thanks, you, um, hey, do you, you watch HGTV? I mean, that's kind of how I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you ever got ABC in your house, by the way? Put down your Battlefront right. for a minute. And, um, yeah, right, right. right. I will tell them in the bat cave, okay? I swam <laughs> with sharks. I followed the boon in Africa and pygmy elephants in Borneo. And, and you like my, my accent and you're, in and a video you, game? You like, the, you like the fact that I'm a chick with a gun and splinter cell. This is not really cool, man. <laughs> Hey, listen, that was my finest work because they had me, I had to die. So I'm in, I'm in the booth and you have to die different ways because in one scenario you might be shot. In another scenario you might be stabbed. So they just said, okay, now I need you to just give us a couple, the sound you would make, like you're dying but you got shot to make that sound. And then they say, okay, now you're getting stabbed. I find myself going, <laughs> making the same noise. Like I, I don't even know. I've never been shot or stabbed, so I'm not really sure. Is what that a frame of reference there? Right? I mean, okay, listen, you yeah. know what, Rachel, I know that we're all looking forward to seeing the behind the scenes of HGTV, because I really am. But now I really uh, want to see the behind the scenes of your death scenes in the video game, because <laughs> we have videotaped the different deaths of you making the same sound. You're stabbed. <clears throat> You're shot. <clears throat> it's like, whoa, this is really, yeah. got to be extremely entertaining, to be perfectly honest. Unfortunately, it, I, I started to become embarrassed, because it's kind of sounded like, um, it, uh, like like a porn. Like I was, ah, oh, no, that, wait. Uh, I mean, oh, oh, yeah. Like, okay, I've got to just, I've, I don't know how to make a sound of death. So, uh, I'm, I'm sure that I would swear, but you can't swear. So I'm sure that you know, one of the last things that my, I don't know, I don't know. But I apparently, I did it, I did it. And it was believable enough for a video game. <laughs> and the fans love it. They're sending her more mail than they are for her shows yeah. on the ABC Weekend Wildlife Doc. Uh, so well, that's, pop- now wait. That's not yet. I mean, we've only been on the air for six months. So I'm still waiting for, you know. Oh, that's true. The, the, fan, mail, the fan mail should start pouring in now. Because now exactly. we know the depth of the show. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm still checking my mailbox every day. Everything's digital now. So, you know, it's. It's not as much about the actual fan mail. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Rachel Reinstra has been talking with us about ABC Wildlife Docs and uh, some of her other stuff. And great, great interview and a great, great time. Rachel, thank you so much for fitting us in. We're going to talk again soon, okay? Absolutely. Saturday morning, 1030, ABC. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. We'll link to that, and uh, we're going to track down the behind-the-scenes videos. And oh, boy. You're on Facebook and Twitter and stuff? Yes, I am. You can find me on uh, yeah, on Facebook under my name. There's one other Rachel Reinstra, but she's like 15. Okay, so well, it won't be her then. Run her in anyway. Why not? She has a, she hasn't faked six different deaths, so we'll be able to tell the difference. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, maybe Rachel. One day, maybe one day I'll have the death of being like, you know, bit by an elephant. Okay, you're not, you're getting trampled by an elephant. Do that. Do that. It's the same sound, Rachel. What's going on here? <laughs> I don't understand. They just, they just, they just, a building fell on you, and that's the sound. Rachel, it's the same sound. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. It's, oh, Rachel Rain. Thank you again so much and we'll talk again soon. You got it. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye.